Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool. Tonight we are doing a Facebook Live all about a snowman theme. So get ready because I have tons of fun ideas that you can do in your classroom with things you already have. And then I have some fun snowman freebies for you too. Um, so stay tuned for all the things. So first things first, our favorite book of all time for a snowman theme is, of course, Snowman at Night. So this is actually a freebie that has been on my blog for a while. So it is, they are retelling cards. This is actually how I keep it um, in my bookshelf. So I just keep it in like a little zip zipper or a Ziploc bag. That way I remember that I have the retelling cards for books because otherwise I forget and then I read the book or I remake them. So, all right. And then it has all the retelling cards and I have magnets on the back. Um, I just laminated the cards and put magnets on the back. So that way as I read the story and what I do is I typically read the story the first day because I usually, I love this book so much. I usually read it multiple times and we all know the more times you read a book, the more um, like repetition is so beneficial for kiddos because every time you read, they notice different things and they notice things in the text and things in the illustration and things the author is doing and the illustrator is doing. Um, but so I, I would read it the first time just for fun and we can notice and or make connections or maybe you can make a chart about what kids would do if they were snowing at night. Um, and then the second day I ask so what, do you guys remember what the snowman did at night or what the events were in the book? And I hand out the cards. And then as I read the book, we put the sequence of events up in order. And then we talk about what happened first, what happened in the middle and what happened at the end. Um, so it's kind of getting that sequence of story and putting things in order. So again, these are free on my website. So grab these because this is such a fun book. It is like the perfect book for a snowman or a winter theme. And this year, so I think in December, I released my snowman um, math and literacy centers. So if you need math and literacy games, grab that. I'm gonna show you guys some of those tonight. Um, and I know in this book has more in the series, there's also snowmen at play, and then there's also snowmen at work, there's snowmen all year long, snowmen at Christmas. So there's a ton of books in this series that I love. Um, so those are always fun to read. And then, I don't know if you guys know this one. This one is another really fun book. It's kind of a take on the gingerbread man, but um, but he's a snow dude and he like runs away from people and there's repetitive text. And it's a really fun book because we all have probably just finished reading all those gingerbread books. And this one is great. And again, if you can't find it, I'm sure you can probably listen to it or watch it on YouTube. Um, this is another really, really fun, amazing book. Um, and then my other favorite snowman book is How to Catch a Snowman. So those are my top favorite books. And I have a whole um, book list with all of my favorite snowman books on my blog. So hop over there if you want even more books about snowmen. But I want you to tell me in the comments either your favorite snowman book or your favorite snowman activity that you do with your class every year, or maybe it's a sensory table or a math game or an art activity. So tell me yours in the comments below so we can learn from each other too. So usually I walk around the room, but sometimes I have issues with my perception. So I'm gonna kind of do it and I have, I'm surrounded as always. So I'm gonna show you all the things. Now, I never get to all of these things in one given year. Um, but different years, if you have different kiddos with different needs and you have to work on different skills um, based on what those kids need. So, um, so pick and choose what you need this year and maybe you can save one for next year. Um, and I will have a whole blog post all with, with all the snowman activities, but um, I will do that tonight and it should be up tomorrow. So let's talk about manipulatives. So these are my favorite manipulatives for a snowman theme. So obviously cotton balls, easy. Fluffy. I also love these like cotton pads. They're like makeup pads, I think. Cotton rounds. Um, so these are really fun um, to use for a manipulative. They also stick to a felt board. Um, I found these at the dollar store. Those are great um, for all kinds of games. You can also use marshmallows. Now, listen to my marshmallows. These are hard 
as a rock. <laughs> I leave my marshmallows out that I use for manipulatives so that way they're not squishy and sticky and they won't eat them. I'll say, oh, these are pretend marshmallows and they think they're pretend, but they're not. Um, if you put the hard ones or the bigger ones out, they'll get hard too. Um, just give it a couple days and they won't eat them. And they're easy, um, they won't, you won't get like sticky, squishy, yuckies all over the place. Um, so that's really fun manipulative. You could also grab any manipulative you already have like counters and just get out like that color for that theme. So I just got out like snowman colors for these cubes. Pom-poms are great. I have some purple, some dark blue, some light blue, um, and white. And then these gems from the Dollar Tree. Um, they come in the small and then there's bigger ones. These are great. Um, and then if you have dice, just again, get the color dice that match your theme. Um, tweezers, grab tweezers for your theme that match your color theme. And then for a snowman theme, I love these little, little, I, they kind of look like ice blocks. Um, so these little letter tiles would be great because they're white. You could also um, use buttons, which I'll show you some things I'm gonna do with buttons later. And then um, like these shape buttons are really fun because snowmans have buttons on them. Um, and then you could also grab those little rocks or you can even do it on these gems and you can write letters or write numbers on them. Um, and you can get the like rocks, the little pebbles from the dollar store and they could be your coal from the snowman and you can um, write letters or numbers on those as well. And then you have letter and number manipulatives to match your snowman theme. And then I also love little cups. These are like those ice cream cups. Sometimes um, we would have birthday treats in these, like par parents would bring these in for birthdays. So I would save them. These are great too. Um, so yeah, so all kinds of fun manipulative ideas for a snowman theme. I'm gonna scoot these over here. And then if you wanted to make a sensory bottle, I just made this little guy. He has that fake snow inside. You could also put glitter um, and it like slowly moves. This is just a towel I cut up. Um, and then this is just felt. So we got a little snowman sensory bottle. You could make different um, sensory bottles with different things inside for your snowman. You could put like perler beads inside. Um, you could put like these glass gems in and you could see like what which things float and which things think. Um, you could also, I've seen people do this too where they freeze it and they watch it. You can watch it melt all day. That's really fun too. So let's talk about a Play-Doh tray because you guys know, oh, and mini erasers. If you have mini erasers, those are perfect for that theme too. I typically get my mini erasers from like Target or um, Oriental Trading or in my Kinder Crate. Um, I know Target hasn't been having any lately, so that's why I wanted to give you guys some other manipulative ideas. So here is a snowman tray, like for Play-Doh tray. And what I do instead of putting a snowman cookie cutter in, and you can see like these are from years past because there's like Play-Doh still stuck on them. These are literally twigs from outside. Um, I have some little black rocks for coal from the dollar store, some foam noses, this is just some like vinyl I had because I figured the Play-Doh wouldn't stick to that very well. Um, and then hats. So I made these little guys out of foam and a pom-pom. And you can also use like the baby socks from the dollar store and kind of cut them. And then you have these little hats. And if you're lucky enough for it to actually snow, um, um, put this stuff in with your real snow and they can make snowmen or snow people out of um, using all these things with the real snow. Now, if you're if you're not lucky and it doesn't snow, which I think it's only snowed like one time when I've actually done a winter theme, um, what I like to do is I like to put out different circles or if you have one circle cookie cutter, that's fine too. Um, and that way they can roll the cookie cutters and they can make the different sizes, I'm not gonna make it for you because you obviously know how to make it, but that way they can make the different, this one has like a ripple on one side and then flat on the other, but they can make the different size snowman so you're sneaking in some math with the Play-Doh or they can make like a 3D one where like this is the head, here I'm gonna use a little bit more. Like here's the head and then they can stick the nose on and they have two eyes so they can make it like 3D, it doesn't have to be flat. So let them pick how they wanna make it. 
And then there you go. And then you got the buttons and all the things. So they can either make it flat or 3D. Let them pick. And you can, so for this Play-Doh tray, I actually literally take all of these contents and I put them in a bag um, because you can tell because there's like Play-Doh stuck on it from the year before. So that way I have it prepped and ready to go for um, the next year. Now for the sensory table, if you don't have real snow or if you don't want to put fake snow in, Oh my goodness. So here's a fun thing you can do. So this is chickpeas that I colored and I need to finish the blog post, but you know, life is getting in the way lately. Um, and my kids have been off school, so for winter break. Um, so these are just chickpeas. I colored some silver, some light blue and some white. And then I put some pom poms in there, throwing them everywhere. Um, and then I tossed in some icicles, which these were actually from like Christmas decor. And then I have some cookie cutters because they can um, use the scoops and they can fill up the cookie cutter with the um, chickpeas. And then I, this I added at the dollar store. So you can either put like a snow, snowflake tray in or you can just put some white containers in that are different sizes. And then this is my favorite part. So these are the like plastic ornaments. And then I just drew on them uh, the snowman face with like a permanent marker. And then I put different colored tape on it. And I don't know where the other guy went because I have one that's silver too. But that way they can take the chickpeas and they can sort them or the pom-poms or whatever it is. Now you could also do beans. And if you want to color beans, I use typically do for chickpeas or beans, I typically do a, acrylic paint. Um, you can also do chickpeas liquid watercolor. I like the paint better lately, actually. Um, but that way, look at all this fine motor and they can sort by color and they're putting them in a little snowman. And I just put tape around the top. Um, you could also paint the top or color it with like um, the permanent marker. Poppets would also be fun to put in with chickpeas because they could put one in each one for some great one-to-one -one correspondence or they can just fill it and then they can pop them out. Um, and these are super easy to wash and I like them because they're circles. Um, yeah, so that is a really fun sensory table. Now, if you want to sneak in some literacy, what you can do is take some letters. Again, I just took, like these are the letter beads that I use all the time for all the things. And <laughs> you can hear them falling out of my hand. Um, you can just throw them in your sensory bin and then just take a, this is a foam snowflake. I have letters on both sides apparently. <laughs> um, and then put letters on them. So they could put this like on the table or on a tray or something, or just in this, maybe in a tray like this. And then they could match the letter. I'm sure I won't find one. Right oh, here's H. So there, here's the H. And then they could match the H on the snowflake. So you can sneak in some literacy that way. Um, so it's just another fun idea. Or if you're using mini sensory tubs um, for um, literacy, you can do that too. Or you can do it the first week without the letters in there. And then the second week, you can add in the letters and you can put this in there too. And then they can find the letters and match them. So that's just another um, fun idea. And these are just those foam snowflakes that you find at the dollar store or Michael's and this I just wrote on them with permanent markers or they're silver permanent markers so super simple so that's a fun one or a fun thing that you can do I know sometimes um people also make like a snowman with like the sensory bottle like kind of like this look at the big bottle but leave it empty and the kiddos can fill a bottle up if you don't want to do the round ornament so either or so another fun fine motor activity you can do, and this is in my Snowman Math and Literacy Centers. You guys have been requesting some hole punch activities, so I got some for you. So there are some little strips, and what they do is they're just going to hole punch in the middle. And this one is just a big snowman. And again, I just these are like from the dollar store or Target. I typically pull off this piece. So it's not on there because otherwise I find that preschoolers and pre-K kiddos jam them. So I'm getting some of that fine motor work in. 
And then if you want to, if they want to use the big, the long strips, so we have like mittens, and then we got this little snowman, and this snowman, and there's like a snowflake one. And again, I have long and short strips, but you can also tape them and they can make like a little bracelet with the hole punch. So now if you have kiddos that are even smaller, just cut up paper strips, and maybe if you don't have my centers, just have them cut up paper strips, and they can just hole punch all over and make, you can have them try and do it in a row so they can make little snowmen on the paper. So either or, use my strips or make your own. So anything with circles kind of goes for a snowman theme. Right. So there's also a snowman um, cutting craft in my center pack. So you get the little snowman head and then all you're gonna do is cut up some white strips, some black strips, and then the little carrot nose cutout comes with it. And then I actually love my circle punch that I got at Michael's. Um, oh, I typically, somebody asked if I use paper or cardstock for hole punching. I typically just use like regular copy paper or like astrobytes. Um, so yeah, or you can use like construction paper if you just wanted to use colored strips. All right, so what they're gonna do is they're just gonna cut little pieces and they're gonna glue it on. Obviously this one I made, so yours are not. <laughs> the kiddos are not gonna look this, this awesome because an adult did this one. So your kiddos will make them and they will fill it in. Now, if you have littler kiddos, like if you have three-year-olds, make your strips bigger. So that, this, cause this is a lot, of, a lot of little cuts that that took. So if you have younger kids, make thicker strips. That way they are, the bigger the strip is, the more surface the one little spot cover, or the one little clip covers. Like, hold on, let me show you. So this one is smaller because I have like, I think this is like half an inch, almost an inch strip. But if you have three-year-olds, make your paper strips like two inches and then um, it'll cover more space. They won't have to, it won't take as long and it'll meet their, um, It'll be shorter, so greater for their attendance span when they're littler. So that is a really fun snowman craft, and it will look cute on the bulletin board. And again, I think there's a place, I know I've seen it a lot in Facebook groups lately, um, and on Instagram, a lot of like craft versus um, open-ended art. And I think there's a place for both, because this, this is not art to me. This is, um, this is a fine motor activity. This is a scissor skills activity. This isn't really art to me. Um, now the other activities I'm going to show you, they're open-ended art. So those are the art. Now, can they both be in the art center? Absolutely. Like I totally think there's a place for both. And then there's other kinds of art or crafts that are more following directions. And maybe that's your objective for that activity. Maybe it's not that it's art. Maybe it's a following directions. Um, so I think there's a place for all of the art in your classroom. Obviously you've got to balance it out and do what works for you and your kiddos. But that one is in the, this one is in the Snowman Math and Literacy Centers. So this is a fun one um, that you can do at so many levels. So I took an egg carton and I cut it. So like I got four snowmen out of one egg carton. So I just cut it so it has three. Just, and actually I didn't cut it, I used like a knife. And then I drew a little smiley face <laughs> with permanent marker in there. So we got little snowmen. And so you can play this so many ways. So they can literally use these little hand tweezers, which these I got from Walmart, and they can just fill it up. Fill them up. It's literally a fine motor activity. They're just filling it up. Now, if you wanna make it a little bit trickier, add a dice. So you have to roll the dice. We're gonna pretend I got two. <laughs> and they have to put that many in the snowman. One, two, and then they roll again. And then they keep going. And then, if you wanna make it addition, they can roll two dice. And they can say six plus four is 10. And then they would have to put 10 in their little snowman. So any way you want to play it, play it. But it's a really fun, fine motor game you can play for a snowman theme. And it's literally with egg cartons. So fun, so cute. And I'm sure you have tweezers and white, white pom-poms. And if you have colored pom-poms, that is okay too. You can use cotton balls, like the smaller ones. Or if you want to use cotton balls, I've done this before in years past. I've cut them. 
So if you, oh, I grabbed the scissors that are only for, those are like the safety scissors. So you can cut your cotton balls. Is it annoying? Yeah. Okay, it's not gonna cut for me because I have like kid scissors. But if you have giant cotton balls and you wanna do an activity like this, you can just cut them in half and then you have like smaller, smaller cotton balls because some of them are just gigantic, I feel like. <laughs> so that's the option too. That's a really fun one activity that you can do and that can be like for um, fine motor work for like arrival time like when kiddos come in or morning senders or arrival centers just something to kind of get those fingers moving and grooving and making them super strong now this one is my one of my favorite things it's my snowman stew so if you have the stews bundle get it out because there is a snowman stew in it and what the little scarves are is I just cut these out of fleece from the dollar store. I have little sticks. Some I think some of these I think are pre-bought. Some are from the outside. Little hats I made with foam. Got cotton balls and then carrot noses, which um, I forgot to grab. But I have little math counter carrots, which I don't think these are available anymore. So you can just use um, like you can just cut up some foam, little triangles like you would for a craft and you can throw those in there. And then what they do is they count out each one and they put it in their bowl. And I use like a little snow shovel because it's a snowman too. And then they mix it up and then they put it back in. And then they pick the next card. And there's cards that go up to five and there's cards that go up to nine. So for different levels, there's ones that are lower, ones that are higher. And then there's also like, here's like a lower card. And then there are also, blank ones so you either you can fill them in or you can have your kiddos fill them in or if you have little 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 ones you can make these like little dice so you can draw the dots and what um you can do is get those versa markers so that way they don't erase but you can use like water to erase on your lamination so that way the kids can't erase them but you can if you want to and make them for different levels so that is another fun option if you want to make them harder or easier and you can also put little addition problems in these little boxes as well. So this is in my counting stew bundle. There's that activity. All around me I'm surrounded. Okay so now I want to show you some of the fun art activities I have. Oh wait sorry I have some more some more um, literacy. So we want to make handwriting fun right? Like here is some of the um this is actually a piece of wax paper. Um, so here, here's this um, snowman writing center and you can put it in your writing center, put the word cards and pocket charts and all my word cards, they always come uppercase and lowercase. So you pick what you wanna use, but I always try and give you a fun new way to write. So let's say I pick the word sled. You can write it on the wax paper and then let's, it erases. Now, does it erase really good like um, foil? No. If you want to use foil, though, you can totally use foil. That totally works. And then they pick a new card and then they write the next one. So again, wax paper doesn't erase as good as foil, but you're just going to throw it away. Or they can write a whole bunch of them. Like they could write sled small if you have bigger kiddos. And then they could pick the next word and write snowflake. So they could kind of use it just as a fun, different paper. But if you want it to erase really well, you can use foil. It's so fun if you, if you want to try word work or writing on foil. You can also have them write their names on foil and then use a, um, a snow, snowman ball to erase. That would be really fun too, to kind of sneak in some more snowman theme. So they got the little eraser and their words. And then all um, there's also fun themed writing paper in there. So you can put this in, in your writing center along with some like dart markers or stickers or dry erase, or you can cover your dry erase boards in foil and then they can write on the ice. Um, so all kinds of fun things you can do for word work for a snowman theme. Now, you know I love writing trays and a snow theme is probably one of the easiest writing trays you're gonna do because it's, you don't have to color the salt because it already looks like snow and then just add some glitter so you got some super sparkly snow. These little snowmen are in the snowman writing center. Um, so this is just a kid plate. If you don't have those 
fancy um, like wooden trays, that's okay. I always make the, make sure the kiddos, I, my rule is with our writing trays, they have to stay glued to the table and they shake, shake, shake to erase. And then they make their S. And I always put a little pom-pom in there, which you can say these are little snowballs. And because look at all that pincer work they're doing. And then they make their S. And then they shake, shake to erase and they pick the next one. Um, so you can also do like letter matching. This is really fun to do with the um, snowman, um, snowman at night. So they have to find their buddy, and their buddy could be the other, the other letter. Or, and then they could put their little snowman in, and they could have their little snowman um, friends with the capital and then the lowercase. You can also print out two sets of uppercase, and you can just match the uppercase. If you have younger learners, if you have older learners, you can have them make sight words. And sight word cards do come with it. <laughs> so you can put all the lowercase letters out and they can make snowman friends and they um, can make their sight words out of that. Just making some, um, making it fun. This one is a really fun game. So this one is a snowman smash and build. So you're gonna need some Play-Doh for this one. Or they can pretend to smash if you don't wanna put out some Play-Doh. So what you're gonna do is they don't have to make it like cute little balls, they just pinch some Play-Doh out and then they need some cubes. And what they're gonna do is they're going to tap or clap or hum, whatever you want to do, um, the different words, and then they're gonna build it. So icicle, 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 and then they can check it, icicle, and that would be three. And then they have to just make the little balls again. Again, they don't have to make them perfect, just kind of ball them back up. And then they get to make another word like hat. Hat, hat, hat. So they're saying the word three times. They are counting it the three th that many times and then they keep doing it until their whole board is full. And then by the end, they'll be able to see which words are long and which words are short based on how many cubes there are. Um, on their board. So that's a really fun game. I know anytime we smash Play-Doh is always, it always makes it even more fun. Okay. That's another fun game. And then, oh, okay. I have two more games from the literacy centers and then I got some art to show you. So this one is a fun game. So you can play it two ways. You can play it as a path game or you can play it as cover up. So you pick what you want to do. Maybe your kiddos you think would like a path game more. You think maybe they would just like cover up. So what you're going to do is grab some letter manipulatives and they're going to pick the letter and then cover it up. Pick the letter and then cover it up. Or they can pick the letter and cover up the sound. Or they can pick a letter and dot the sound or pick a letter and dot the letter. So these would be more of like a worksheet type. D different ki different ears, different kids like different things. So there are both options on this game. And there's uppercase, lowercase, and sounds. And then the last literacy game I want to show you is this really fun one. This is a snowman rhyme game. So what it is, is you have to match the buttons to the snowman. So like rug and mug, puck, duck, trunk, sunk. And they have to match all the buttons. You could put these little buttons in the sensory table. You can also just throw some cotton balls on the on your tray just to add a little bit more sensory. So just some fun rhyming game um, with your snowman and the buttons. And again, all those printables are in the snowman math and literacy centers pack. Are you guys ready for this amazing art project? So I teased people on Instagram. I showed you guys this one this morning um, when I was making it because I wanted to make sure it would dry in time so you guys could see how it looked dry. So this gorgeous thing is, um, it's not fancy. It is literally regular tissue paper on wax paper cut out like a snowman with liquid starch. Like the stuff you use for slime. This stuff. I get this at Walmart usually. Um, you can tell it's my bottle's really clean. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, and look when it's dry, you can see how the colors kind of bleed together. I love doing this activity when we're doing color mixing because the colors kind of mix. 
but I just wanted to show you guys how neat it is. So once you get a snowman, and I literally just drew one on here and then trace, I usually just trace a bunch and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just for little kids. And I know it looks like my tissue paper is fancy, but I just buy like some packs, like multicolor packs from like Target or Walmart. And I literally grabbed like a sheet of blue, a sheet of purple, like all the blues, one, sh one shade of all the blues, one of all the purples. And literally I just cut strips. Like I almost like roll it up, like I fold it up and then I cut strips and then I just cut, cut, cut. Cause these are not all created equal. They're not fancy because the kids don't care. Like they don't care if I take an hour to prep it or five minutes. So I'm, I'm gonna go with five minutes. So what they do is they put a one tissue paper on at a time, or let's be honest, this is really how it goes, right? <laughs> they put a couple on there and then they paint it on. Now they're gonna move around a little bit so they have to use that other hand to hold the paper, which is a great for practicing having both sides of the body working at the same time. Um, and having both hands do different things. Now what you're gonna see is when the tissue paper crosses. And again, this is regular tissue paper. It's not like that, like bleeding tissue paper or anything. It's just regular tissue paper. What you'll see is it'll start to kind of bleed together and the colors will mix together and, and your liquid starch will change colors a little bit, but it's okay. Now, if you're thinking like my three-year-old can't do this cause they're gonna clump them all on there it's okay. They can clump them on there. It's fine. No big deal. They just paint on there and it'll, it'll just flatten out. Let's say they put a whole bunch on there like that all at once and paint it. That's okay. Because guess what? They can make it however they want. They can put it all at the bottom. They can put it at the top. They can put it spread out like I did. However they want. It's a totally open-ended art project. They are just exploring how the liquid starch kind of melts the tissue paper, because let me show you this guys up close, because you can kind of see how the colors are melting and it's just so, so cool. So again, it's just liquid starch. So it's this, and I get this at Walmart and it doesn't take a lot. Like it's not a big deal. Um, now you probably, the kids probably shouldn't drink this. So make sure you supervise your kids <laughs> when you have this out. Um, cause this is a chemical, but I mean, if it gets on their skin, it won't hurt them or anything. Um, cause you put starch on your clothes, so it's not going to hurt their skin. Um, but obviously you don't want them to drink it. Um, clear glue. I don't think that would work the same cause this isn't a sticky substance like glue. It's more like watery, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not sticky like glue. You may be able to like, um, water glue down. I've never tried that. So if somebody tries that, let me know. Um, but yeah, so liquid starch and regular tissue paper, but the trick is it's just on wax paper, any kind of wax paper, regular, generic, whatever. But look how neat they turn out. And these look um, really pretty in the sun. Um, so pretty. And it, this is a really fun activity too when you do color mixing. So you can do like red and yellow and blue and you can watch the colors, make the different colors. And again, regular tissue paper, not fancy tissue paper. So that is one of my favorite um, snowman activities. Right. Snowman art activities rather. And then another fun art activity is always the melted snowman, right? But do you guys make the puffy paint with it? So how you guys make puffy paint is it's, Okay, I made this this morning, so I was I was I was thinking that was gonna happen. So mine isn't like super puffy anymore. So I made mine this morning. I could still probably use it a little bit, but I just wanted to more show you how it um, how it dries. So see how it's not on my hand, but it's still puffy. You can see it. So yeah, so it dries so cool. So what it is, it's it's um, shaving cream and white glue. So you're good to go. And then you just mix this like equal, equal parts. And then I put some glitter in it, some blue glitter in it, just so it had kind of a little bit of a texture. And then I had my sprinkle shaker of glitter so they could put some glitter on top. And then what I do for pieces is this tray is from the dollar store. I had some little carrot noses. I just cut up some sticks. I like to use ribbon for scarves. And then eyeballs, it's my circle punch. That's how I get all my eyeballs. <laughs> so, and the mouthpieces. So yeah, 
So just super fun, super simple. And if they wanted to put their fingers in it and use it as a sensory experience, that would be totally fine too. It's so, so fun and it dries, puffy, but it, you can't keep the paint for like the next day. So don't make a ton because it's like a, it's a one day, one day paint project. And then you have to get rid of it. So don't make too much is what I'm saying. And then another fun art activity. Oh, here's the freebie. Are you guys ready? So this was actually a freebie in my Facebook group, but so many people have been asking for it. I'm putting it up on the blog. So it is the snowman name freebie. This is one my little guy Austin made when he was in my class. And then here's how I make it and prep it. Um, and you can tell he cut out all the circles. Um, and what you want to do is have those bounce back, have the bounce back scissors out. I have the big ones and the small ones. So that way my little guys can at least try to cut. Um, and then what I do is I have some circles not cut and then I have other circles I have pre-cut. So that way when their hand gets tired, I can give them some of the circles. Like you can tell his hand got tired down here because that one I cut. It's just, and that's okay. Like just have it ready and they are good to go. So I always have a whole bunch of circles and then I have just some hats with printed off in different colors. And then again, I, I just put everything out in a little tray. I have the, oh, I use this tray, sorry. Different tray. <laughs> um, so I have the pom-poms for the top of the hat and then I have sticks and then I have the um, ribbons for the scarves and then I have the noses and the eyes. Look how he put his nose. <laughs> and then I have the pom-pom for the top of the hat. Makes a fun bulletin board and then I literally, when I have it, when, I, when we're done with it, I literally take all the pieces and this is like extra circles and extra sticks that I have like kind of cut. I just like toss them in like this. So that way like I have some stuff cut for the next year and I just kind of toss it all in the baggie so like I'm ready to go. And I don't have to like worry about like where it is or anything like in any of the circles I pre-cut, they're not wasted. I just put it all in like a page protector or a baggie and then we're ready to go the next year. So yeah, so this is a freebie. This snowman name freebie is on the blog. It is live on the blog. The blog post is not finished, but the freebie is there, along with the snowman at night freebie. And then these scissors, um, they're, they're called like, I, I forget what they're called. I call them bounce back scissors, um, but I can put the links up. But Lakeshore has the big ones. Um, the little ones I think are on Amazon and you can also get the big ones on Amazon, but they are great because they literally bounce back open. So when even when my pre-K kiddos, when their hand gets tired, they're like, oh, I want the bounce back scissors. So they may cut some of the circles on their own with the regular scissors and then their hand gets tired, so then they use the bounce back scissors. Or my three-year-olds, they may use these scissors and then use the pre-cut circles that I have at the end. So just like be ready to like help your kiddos out kind of wherever they are so everyone can do the craft and be successful. And maybe some of your kiddos just only cut out part of the circle. You can always go back and, and like help them. No big deal. Okay. But yeah, look at this little guy. He's so cute. And they make a really cute bulletin board too. And then to go with snowman at night, it's always fun to give them black paper. I gave my kiddos colored pencils for these and they made little snowman families. I love these. Um, but you could also use like neon oil pastels would be fun on these on black paper just to make it like pop a little bit more. So that's a fun idea. You could also use and they can stamp the snowman with a big marshmallow or like um, I would say big cotton ball but if you stamp with a cotton ball eventually it gets like stringy so use a big marshmallow um, or like a marshmallow that you've set out the night before and it'll get a little bit hard or like any kind of like circle block or circle stamper so they stamp 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 and then just put out some collage materials and they can make the eyes and the nose and the hat and all the things. And then you can tell I, I like love a snowman craft. So you can also do a snowman craft collage. So just put some circles out like this, or you can use some of these and put these circles out. These I just um, traced with the inside of a masking tape. 
That's my like go-to if I need to like make a circle. <laughs> so you can make them that way. And then what they're gonna do is you can put out the small paper with some all the different scissors. And I, in my art center, I just have like a bucket of shapes. So there's foam shapes in here, there's small shapes in here. So if usually if we have like extra shapes from a craft, I throw them in here. If we have like scrap paper, I'll just like free cut or like cut by hand just some random shapes and throw them in. And, it, and then we just have some, like a big bucket of shapes at all times for shape collages in the art center. So then they use the circles and they make little snowmen. And I always put out the markers with them, just like a bucket of markers because look at all the cute details they make. So, but they can put them on small paper, big paper, whatever you want or whatever they want, right? Anything goes. So that's another fun um, art, open-ended art activity. And if their snowman looks like it melted, that's fine too. If it's all over the place, that works too. So you guys know I love butcher paper activities. So I just drew some snowman on a piece of butcher paper and I cut it wavy, honestly, because I cut it really not straight. <laughs> that's the real reason why it's wavy. And I just drew some shapes on there so they can match the shape buttons to the snowmen. Now, what else could you put in these snowmen? You could put numbers in there. So you could put like numbers inside and then they have to put that many snowballs in. You could put letters in there and then they would have to match all your letter manipulatives onto the snowman. You could also draw little hats on them and they, you could draw a number on there and they have to make a hat. You could, you could do so many um, butcher paper activities for a snowman theme. Honestly, it's really, it's really endless what you could do. But this is a fun one. I just love these little shape buttons because I know a lot of us have them in our classrooms and they're perfect for the snowman theme. All set over here. Okay, so this is a fun kind of science slash snowman activity. So this is baking soda. Um, uh, dish soap and then liquid watercolor is also in there and then if you can see there are again my little snowmen that I made with my egg cartons and then there's also letters in here so we're and then I usually put the vinegar in a little cup and put that up there I'm gonna use both at the same time so you can kind of see and then you will have some snowmen eruptions and then what they do is they can try and find the letter and then once the bubbles kind of go down they'll be able to see what letters there are um but it's just so much fun it's a great fine motor activity cause and effect um you can put different colors in i kind of put the so what i do is i put the dish soap in and then i put liquid watercolor in and then I put the letters in and then the baking soda on top. So they're kind of covered, kind of not, but then you can kind of see them as you can kind of see the letter as the bubbles go away. And then I usually don't hide any letters in the snowman, but you can kind of see, let's just make it all fun. Obviously you wouldn't want the kids to just dump it, but we're gonna do it for fun. <laughs> but as they use the droppers, they can be more precise and then they'll be able to see the letters better, but when the bubbles go away, which I'll show you at the end of the Facebook Live, um, you can actually see the letters. So it's really, really fun. There's one kind of poking out. That's a fun one. Those in here, those are the letter beads that I get. Those are in here, these are the, um, they're just like the letter beads I get from Amazon or Lakeshore that I use not as letter beads. I just use them as more of um, letter manipulatives. They're my favorite and they come in uppercase and um, in lowercase. They're super fun. And then for, oh, I have some, a couple more math. I want to show you some math activities from the center pack. If I don't have everything collapsed on me. So, and you can do this activity actually if you have my math center pack or if you don't. So what you, they can do is make snowman shapes with toothpicks and um, marshmallows. Now again, my marshmallows, they're hard because preschoolers eat everything. And they have to, they're a little bit more, um, they're hard, so you have to, um, they're a little bit 
they stay better, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Because if you've ever built with marshmallows, they're kind of wiggly and they kind of wobble all over the place. So it's kind of frustrating for some kids um, when they're building with marshmallows and building up. But yeah, so they can build the little marshmallows, all the different shapes. And I have two different shape cards. Now you can also use Play-Doh and draw and make like Play-Doh snakes and make all the different shapes with those as well. Or you can do them on here. You could also take shape buttons and match them to these shape cards. That would also be another fun um, activity too. So those snowman cards are in the math and literacy centers pack. And then, so this is actually a letter game and it comes in a number game. But what it is, it goes, the numbers go up to 20. So it has a little snowman. There's the head with the number. And then there's tallies and um, 10 frames. And then at the very, I also included, where are they? Of course I can't find them right now. There's also empty snowmen. So that way if you can play this a couple different ways. So you can put these all, like just put the cards in a sensory bin and they have to pull out the cards and they have to make the snowman, which is so much fun. This is one of my favorite activities. But if you have this on a table without the sensory bin like this, can add manipulatives and then they can put the manipulatives in the bottom and then you have you're making it more hands-on because they have five they're counting five they're counting five and then they have to count out five objects but the numbers go up to 10 or 20 sorry but you can put these in a sensory tub you can just put these on the table you can put these in a pocket chart totally up to you and again put out the numbers that work for your kids if you have three-year-olds put out numbers one to six and maybe don't put out the tally marks. That is okay if they're just matching the five and the 10 frame. Um, if you have pre-K, put them up to 12. If you have kinder, put out, you know, 10 to 20. Um, you pick what you put out. You don't ever have to put out all of them. You never have to put out starting at one. Um, it's totally, you totally pick what works for your class. And then there's also an alphabet set as well. So we have the C. And then we have the big, the lowercase c, and then the uppercase c, and then we have the letter sound. So again, you could put these in a sensory tub. You could put these on the table. This would be a really fun game to if you had out all the little snowman heads across the table in the morning, and the kids had to pick, match up the uppercase, lowercase, and letter sound. Um, that would be really fun. And again, put out the letters you're working on, maybe the letters you've done, or covered so far the letters in your um, kiddos names or just put out letters A through M and then the next day put out letters N through Z whatever works for you but there's a lot of cards so if you have, if you have little guys pick the ones you want to do um so all of these printables are all in the the snowman math and literacy centers pack on TPT and then there is the melted snowman game this game comes in color which this one I actually colored in. It comes like in black and white, which I just colored with a marker. And you put a spinner on here, which I forgot to grab. <laughs> and then you spin the spinner and, or you can put like a paper clip with a pencil on here and they spin it and then they have to mark how many. So they're counting and they're collecting data and then they can see which one has more and which one has less. So that's another fun activity in there. And then the other fun one, you guys were telling me you needed some more or less activities. So I listened and in the snowman centers pack, we have one less and one more. So you put my number in and then you have to make one more and one less. And you can either do that with your dry erase marker. So one less would be three, one more would be five and then they can build it in there too. So they can make a snowman with three and then they can make a snowman with five. So then they can visually compare two and then there's a number line at the bottom so they can, um, if they need help finding what is before and what is after. Oh, somebody was asking me about the sensory bins. So my sensory bins are just like under the, sh what, under the bed, like, like plastic tubs. Um, I usually get the Sterilite ones from Target. I usually honestly get the same ones just so they stack easier. But you can get any under the bin tub um, that works for you. And then for science, this is the last thing. In my C 
snow and ice science pack. There is a snowman experiment. And you guys, my kids, the year I did this, the year before COVID, so, or the year, I guess COVID started, 20, well, I don't even remember, 2020, we did this and they loved it. So what you do is you take water, take balloons and you make a snowman with ice. So basically you just fill up three balloons and have one super inflated, one medium and one small. And then you can either do felt or um, foam, the felt will stick a little bit better. Um, and you put the buttons and eyes on there. And then this is just a rainbow ruler. And you guys, all that is is a wooden ruler and I color each into different colors so they can count the inches rather than counting the actual, they can count the color blocks instead of counting the inches, but they're using a ruler and they're learning how to use a ruler without having to use it or have to read the numbers and all the things. So they're just learning how to use an ins um, measurement instrument. So, and then what they're gonna do is you're gonna measure how big it is and you're gonna mark the time. Um, like it's been out for one minute and you're gonna observe it. So it's just talk, you're just working on some observation skills and you can write it down. And then go back once you see it melt a lot and it's gonna really depend on how, how warm your classroom is um, or maybe you're gonna put it outside, whatever you wanna do. And then you can see it's kind of melted a little bit more. And then we measured how big it was, how many hours had passed, and then we took some observations. And at the very end, it was completely melted and how long it took to completely melt and then what we noticed. So they got to, as, as the day, well, it's okay. So this one, we had to go back the next day because I taught half day. So we did this one right before we left because I taught half day. And then this one, I actually texted all the parents because um, we like through like our app, I texted all the parents the picture so the kids could see that it went when it had actually melted. And then the next day when they came into the classroom, we observed or that's when we did our observations. But that way they could see like how long it actually took to melt. So it was really, really fun. Um, and you, again, you can do use this without the little cards, but if you want all the printables for the Watch Me Melt Snowman experience, experiment, that is in the Snow and Ice um, Science Center. And this is really great, the Science Center. I, this one's a really fun one, because snow, especially if it's not by you, it's really hard to do a Science Center on. So there's like snowflakes that they can measure and notice then they can make snowflakes with pattern blocks. So it's a really fun science center for winter, even if you don't have like snow and ice winter, like if you're in Florida. Um, it's a fun way to explore snow and ice, um, even if you don't have it by you. Or if you're like me, it never snows. <laughs> it never snows or I don't get ice when I'm doing this science unit. It's, I, that always happens usually before or after. Um, and I try and plan accordingly to Missouri weather, but you know, it never cooperates with me. <laughs> I think it's usually happened like one or two years. Um, so yeah. So, and I do have a blog post about the rainbow ruler. So I will put that, it's a really old one, but it's there. Um, so I'll put that in too. So you just color a wooden ruler with Sharpies because um, learn this the hard way. Um, if you use washable markers, it will... Um, wash off <laughs> so use sharpies so that way when you do an experiment with water it doesn't wash away so yeah so i hope you guys oh before i forget blocks and then and then we're all done for tonight so but before i forget all the links are at the top of this post if you have questions feel free to pop them in after we're done live tonight and tomorrow i will fill in the whole snowman blog post with all of these activities but the freebies are there if you need them but for blocks I don't know about you, but I've never seen like snowman figures. So have your kiddos make some. So give everybody an index card. And if you don't have that many blocks, put one kid on each side or one kiddo snowman on each side, just give them an index card because that's about the size of these blocks. Or you can use Jenga blocks to so just give them a smaller little card. And they can make snowmen for your block center. And then they can act out snowmen at night and make the different scenes of the book in um, in the block center and now you have a little snowman and it is so much fun and they can build with a little snowman but I set up my my center 
So here I have it set up. And then these positional word cards are in the Ice Fort Blueprint are all in the Snowman Math and Literacy Center's pack. So basically put in anything like silver and white. So I have our snowman blocks. Um, and then I have some foam and felt. And then I have silver cans because they're silver, like snow. These are literally balls of foil. I think we use these for like a letter activity and I just kept them for the block center. Some silver cups, cotton balls. These are those like um, food like containers like you get ranch in. I just got like a little sleeve of those. Maybe you can ask a restaurant, maybe they'll donate them to you. You can always cover cardboard or your blocks in foil. These are just actually pieces of cardboard I covered in foil. If you don't have a lot of things, which it's totally fine, just use what you've got. And then these are just some smaller pieces of felt that I just put out. And then you have a fun snowman themed block center at little or no cost. And you guys, if you get silver cups or gold cups, you can use them for like space, um, space, a lot of the holidays. You usually get them at like Party City. I hope you guys have an amazing day wherever you are. I hope you either don't get sick or um, you stay warm. Or if you're in Florida, not fair because I'm in Missouri and it's so cold. So I will see you guys next week and I will talk to you soon. Bye.